This presentation will introduce the State University of New York Exploring Emerging Technologies for Lifelong Learning and Success. Specifically, we'll talk about interacting and engaging with students using accessible apps from MTech Wiki. The URL for the project is suny.edu slash mtech. In today's internet, there are so many choices. There's ever-growing, ever-changing selections of new tools and resources, and they vary in their purpose and their quality. How is someone to know what's the best tool to choose? That's where MTech MOOC comes in. It's discovery learning to explore and reflect on innovative and creative uses of emerging technologies. It's an online learning opportunity that is targeted to all learners. Anyone who has an interest to stay current with today's rapidly changing technologies is encouraged to enroll. It's especially well suited to students and instructors at the college level. The project comes in two parts. One is MTech MOOC. That's the short name for the project and also our hashtag. The MOOC is a massive open online course. It's housed in the Coursera platform and it provides a supportive online learning opportunity. Coursera is a platform pretty much similar to any learning management system. You have content, you have the ability to interact and discuss in, dis in discussion forums, and also quizzes. The content of the MOOC is organized around the four C's of 21st century skills, communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. The other part of the project is MTech Wiki. That's where we'll focus most of our efforts on today. The Wiki is socially curated and it contains a repository of freely available technology tools, tutorials, and resources. The Wiki is used within MTech MOOC to complete hands-on activities. The Wiki is also an open website and available as a standalone resource. This screen is a blow-up of the Wiki. You can either go straight to the Wiki using suny.edu slash mtech and then navigate to the Discover menu, or if you come here from the MOOC, you're automatically filtered to the section of the MOOC that you're participating in. So you see across the middle of the screen, there's the 21st century skills, lifelong learning, communication and collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. So if you come to the Wiki from the second module, the 500 resources that are in the MOOC are automatically narrowed down to just the ones that help you communicate and collaborate. You can then filter even further either using objectives such as creating a professional identity, enhancing collaboration, or raising awareness. You can also filter by technology categories. Some of the categories include audio, blogs, wikis, e-portfolios, gamification, lifelong learning, open educational resources, photos and images, simulations, and the most popular category is video. You can sort the results by the highest rated and by popularity, and you can also use the open text field to search by keyword. Since this is a wiki, you can all, anyone is welcome to contribute to the wiki. You just need to create an account and then add your resource. Before the resource is live, the MTech team will moderate and make sure that all of the information is appropriate. The learning process of MTech is to first read, view, and participate with the materials within the MOOC. You're then directed to explore the wiki tools and resources from each module and asked to complete hands-on discovery exercises. You then create something using the tool that you've explored to create an artifact. And you can optionally put that into an ePortfolio and reflect on your learning. At the end of the course, if you complete all the quizzes, you can earn digital badges and a Coursera Certificate of Completion. So what are the rewards for participating? 
Well, in addition to creating a personal portfolio and collecting digital badges and a Coursera certificate, we hope the biggest reward is the intrinsic reward of being a lifelong learner. This screen shows the reach of MTech. In the three years that the course has existed, 30,000 learners have enrolled. These are from 150 plus countries. You'll see on the map that there's a few that have bigger circles than others. India, Mexico are some of the countries that very often enroll in MTEC. The biggest circle is over New York State. That represents the state where SUNY is located. So what is accessibility? Pretty much colleges and universities nationwide embrace the idea of a diverse student body. They want students to be accepted whether they have disabilities or not. However, creating a college campus that's physically and technologically accessible is quite a challenge. This definition is taken from the National Federation of the Blind. A statistic we want to share is that 11% of higher education students in the U.S. have some kind of disability. This, this statistic is from the National Center for Education Statistics. Accessibility is often on a spectrum. So the spectrum extends from permanent to temporary to situational. Permanent disabilities can include cognitive disabilities such as somebody with ADHD or um, autism. They can have somebody that is physically disabled in a wheelchair or with mobile impairments. Or somebody can have uh, in disabilities of their senses. They can be blind or deaf. They can also have temporary disabilities. So if somebody just has broken their arm, they're temporarily disabled. If somebody is um, under mental distress, they have cognitive disabilities. It can also be situational. So interruptions and distractions, um, just no external noise, they can also represent disabilities. So what should a faculty member do to accommodate this? One thing that they should do is have a good understanding of the Universal Design for Learning, or UDL. One of the main principles of UDL is the ability to design and deliver media in multiple formats. This allows anybody to be able to take advantage of the information that's being conveyed in the content, whether or not they can see it or hear it or interact with it. Other principles within UDL include providing multiple means of engagement, multiple means of action and expression and also representation. In UDL, faculty need to be able to share universally, universally designed course content. In addition to recorded and live video, some of the items that they can supply include PowerPoint with detailed speaker notes. They can provide an additional transcript for those that prefer text-based learning, outlines, and also audio files. This screen may be somewhat difficult to read on the video, but I'll highlight some of the items that, um, some of the formats that are commonly used within a course, the barrier that exists, and also some of the accessible alternatives that you can use. So for example, if you normally would use printed text in a course, that printed text on a piece of paper is incompatible with screen readers. Screen readers are used by people that are blind or have low vision and students with learning disabilities. What you can do with that printed text is also supplement it with audio. Audio is one of the other formats that I want to mention. Hearing impaired students may not be able to easily hear the content. Students with auditory processing issues may also have difficulty. Audio can be supplemented with printed text. So for example, providing a transcript for the audio. If you have video, you might have somebody who is blind or has low vision and they won't be able to see that video. 
Hearing impaired students cannot hear it, and students who have learning disabilities may have difficulty understanding a video. Accessible alternatives, you can provide descriptions, captions, written transcripts, and also describing the visuals that are shown in that video are very helpful. If you have pictures, you might have blind or low vision students who can't see those pictures. If you add text that fully describes what's in that image, that will help your learners participate whether or not they can see that picture. In a synchronous discussion, you might have blind or low vision students or students with learning disabilities who have difficulty keeping up. If you use asynchronous format for all or some of your discussions, this will allow more time for processing and responding as compared to just using synchronous all the time. Tests and quizzes are another area that you might want to consider. Having students with disabilities might have slower processing speeds. In this case, you might want to provide some extended completion time. You might want to supplement some of the text questions with audio and also provide different size options for the text on the screen. These are just some of the formats and the barriers and some of the alternatives that you can do to make your course content accessible. At the University of Buffalo, 10% of students reported using assistive technologies. Some of those technologies include screen readers, Screen magnification software is used by 17% of the respondents. OCR has been used by 17% of that 10%. And speech recognition, 18%. Hands-free speech input devices are used by 16% of those 10% students who responded that they use assistive technology. One thing we've done in relation to the MTEC project to try to combat this need for having items that are fully accessible for learners is to create the EdTech Tools and App Review Checklist. This checklist measures and helps individuals understand what it means for something to be fully accessible. Other categories on the checklist include security and privacy and also cost. The checklist was created from some resources that were created by Wendy Torres. She's created the Web 2.0 and EdTech scorecards, and also the Information Security Primer for Evaluating Educational Software, published by Common Sense Media. These items were licensed under Creative Commons with non-commercial 4.0 international share-alike licenses. So that's how we've licensed the EdTech checklist that we've developed. Just to give you some examples of some of the questions that are on the checklist, one of the first questions asks a person to identify if a VPAT exists. A VPAT stands for Voluntary Product Accessibility Template. So just by having the person go through understanding what a VPAT is, and instructing them how they might find that VPAT, for example, in the footer under the accessibility menu of a website, they get a better understanding of what it means for something to be accessible. The additional questions in the accessibility section can be deciphered from that VPAT if one exists. So some of those additional questions are, can the tool be navigated and can it be used with only a keyboard? Does the item have captioning and transcription if there is audio available? Does the tool rely solely on color to convey the meaning to the user? Another question is if the tool works successfully on any type of internet-abled device. This checklist is, will be eventually programmatically connected to the MTEC records. When somebody adds a new resource, they'll be asked to complete the checklist. When somebody is reviewing the resources on the wiki, they'll be able to view the previous reviews and determine if an app is accessible or not. The MTech team will also take steps to 
fully highlight when there are tools that are not accessible or when there are tools that violate the security and privacy settings that we have identified as what should be the standard. So once we have the MTech wiki and we are able to identify some of the items that need to be Another point that I want to mention in this presentation are some of the selected resources on MTech Wiki that help a faculty member to design UDL based courses. So, so to be clear, how can a faculty member design their course from the very beginning to be universally designed for any type of learner that comes at that course? What can they do? Well, something they can do is to provide live captioning. There's a few tools within the wiki that help them do that. Web Captioner is a tool that will provide an automatic transcript for any type of audio that it hears. So for example, if you're doing a Zoom recording and you don't have the ability to provide a transcript, if that feature is not available to you, you can use Web Captioner. Google Slides also has the ability to provide automatic translation in relation to the presentation of Google Slides. PowerPoint 365 can also do live captioning and they can also do it in different languages. Other resources that are found on the wiki are tutorials on how to create captions on YouTube. We have a selection of PDF editors PDFs are one of the biggest culprits regarding accessibility. How can you make sure that the items are tagged correctly so that a screen reader will correctly read the content within the PDF? Dictation software is another software that will help in accessible situations. Google Docs has the voice typing extension. This can be used so that as you're talking, Google Docs can type out the text that you are saying. Read and Write for Google Chrome has similar functionalities. In addition, there are some resources that are just a website about accessibility. Uh, the SUNY FACT2 task group has created a great website. That is one of the resources on MTech. And in addition, another resource is Sight Improve. It's an accessibility checker. This is something that the University of Buffalo has licensed for the enterprise. However, many people may not have that ability. They can use the free version of SiteApprove to a certain extent. If you want to learn a little bit more about the MTech project, the video on this screen was recorded at the SUNY Conference on Instructional Technologies. Five different faculty talk about how they integrate MTech into their courses either for their students or for their own professional development. This video is accessible using the link on the screen or you can go to the SUNY MTech website and look under the scholarly presentation section. To wrap up this session we just want you to be encouraged to share information with other people at your campus. The URL for the MTech website again is suny.edu slash mtech. Under the About menu we have a lot of information that you can share. Marketing materials are available, emails that you can copy, paste, modify, social media announcements that you can use, paper flyers, uh, takeaways, also a one minute trailer that pretty much says what I just said within a minute. Please share this information with students and faculty at your campuses. Accessible learning for all. What a concept. We hope that the MTech project will be a step forward in that direction. Thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free to the If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the MTech team at mtechmook@gmail.com. Thank you.